It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And uh, right now I'm on my lunch break here at WLGI 90.9 FM, uh, where I'm a radio DJ as, as well as the broadcasting tech. So I thought that I would take a few minutes to talk a little bit about the Saints. Um, if you have not, please check out the State of the Saints podcast that I put out last night on Michael Thomas' new contract. We all know that he got five years $100 million, $61 million guaranteed. We got to change his name from Can't Guard Mike to Moneybag Mike. <laughs> but uh, I want you all to check that out if you have not already. Um, very, very smart move by the New Orleans Saints. Um, Michael Thomas is going to be one of those offensive players that are going is going to lead the New Orleans Saints uh, into the new generation. You know, once uh, Drew Brees has retired, you're going to need that wide receiver that the new quarterback can depend on. So, shouts out to Mickey Loomis, the front office, for getting that deal done. And uh, hopefully, you know, some of these other GMs around the National Football League can follow the lead of Mickey Loomis and, and the Saints front office. Um, right now, uh, I think maybe like an hour ago, the New Orleans Saints, they released JT Barrett. We know JT Barrett, he was like the third or the fourth string quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. Uh, you know, JT, uh, he wasn't drafted. He was undrafted free agent. The Saints picked him up and they released him a couple of times and they brought him back. So it is probably one, um, one of those, uh, instances where he's going to get, he's going to get cut <laughs> and then they probably going to bring him back. But I think they just did that because they're trying to make room uh, for Michael Thomas to come back. Uh, also, I heard that Latavius Murray, uh, he returned to practice today. Uh, the practice that the Saints are having is indoors, so it's closed to the media and the general public. But Latavius Murray hasn't practiced for, for the past uh, few days. Um, you know how uh, Sean Payton is. Sean Payton, Sean Payton he, uh, he don't really uh, talk about – uh, injuries or anything like that. He come from the Bill Parcells school. So anybody that knows Bill Parcells know that Bill Parcells didn't really talk about injuries. So we don't really know what happened with Latavius Murray. Uh, but I mean, I don't want to scare any people in the who that nation, but Latavius Murray is always known for being hurt. Um, that's one of the reasons why the Oakland Raiders back in the day didn't commit to him. And that's the reason why he would end up going to Minnesota. Um, he's a good back when he's healthy, but the thing about it is, man, you know, uh, you know, you got to be available, man. You got to be available when a team needs you. I mean, I know it's early. You know, I don't want to nitpick with him right now. But, I mean, I've been watching Latavius Murray for a long time. And his track record, man, it, it says that he often gets hurt, okay? He's a big back and he can be productive. But we need to see him on the field. Um, also, uh, camp standout Emmanuel Butler wasn't at practice either. Um, Emmanuel Butler been tearing it up in the absence of Michael Thomas. He's been getting first team reps. Uh, Sean Payton has been ranting and raving about him. Uh, he came to camp. Uh, a lot of people thought that he wasn't going to be able to uh, practice fully uh, because he had some injuries and stuff like that. But he came to camp and he's been the talk of it since. So I don't know what's going on with him either, but he's not practicing today. And hopefully, uh, you know, this is not a reoccurring thing because from what I've seen on videos and and, and what Sean Payton been talking about, I want to see this guy in action, man. I think he can contribute to the team. Uh, special shout out to uh, Matthew. What's going on, Matthew, man? Thanks for checking out the live video. Uh, you said some of these other Saints fans are crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> look, anybody that knows me, man, I, I feel like anybody that come across my timeline, anybody that comments, you know, man, you have a right to your opinion, but. I think that sometimes Saints fans don't are not realistic. I mean, they they uh, look at Drew Brees and they think that Drew Brees is an all world, uh, all time great quarterback, and they think that you know some of these players around him aren't really that good. He's making them as good as uh, they look. <clears throat> and um, you know, it, it could be the case. I mean, I understand, man. I mean, you look at some of these players like Robert Meacham, right? Let's let's use Robert Meacham for example. Robert Meacham. Played for the Saints, I think, like three, four years. And then he left and went to San Diego, who are the Los Angeles Chargers right now. He went to San Diego and did absolutely nothing. But if you look at Robert Meacham, you will see that Robert Meacham was a person that they used for two things, okay? 
He was a street route wide receiver when they needed him to run a straight nine route, run it straight down the field as fast as you can, and Drew Brees to throw you the football. And he was also a wide receiver screen uh, a receiver. That's that's basically all Robert Meacham did, okay? And not to mention, like, he was one heck of a blocker. He was probably one of the best blocking wide receivers the Saints ever had. But then you look at people like Robert, uh, not not Robert Meacham, <laughs> I already talked about him, Devery Henderson, man. Devery Henderson also was a deep threat. But Devery Henderson, if you follow him at LSU, you know he ain't never really had no good hands. And honestly, him playing for the Saints, he probably – um, probably played some of his best wide receiver, uh, you know, ever. You know what I'm saying? I know we know about the bluegrass miracle when Devin Henderson caught that pass, but Devin Henderson always had questionable hands, okay? So you can make an argument for these guys. You can argue and say that Drew Brees made these guys better than they were. I don't get the whole Jimmy Graham thing. You know, people saying that Jimmy Graham uh, wasn't good when he left the Saints. That's not true. Uh, Jimmy Graham, his first season with Seattle, Anybody know Seattle? Seattle is a running team, okay? Seattle runs the football. That's the reason why they had Zach Miller at tight end. Zach Miller was a pass-catching tight end, but he was also a good blocker. He was also a good blocker. And we all know that Jimmy Graham is basically a a, a wide receiver masquerading as a tight end. He's a pass-catching tight end. So the offense that Seattle had when he got there wasn't the best offense for him. But as time went on, they changed the offense, and you notice that Jimmy Graham started to inc- improve. <clears throat> he uh, led tight ends and touchdowns the following year, and um, he played really, really good, man. So I-, I feel like a lot of people aren't looking at it realistically. You're not going to find talent like Michael Thomas everywhere. You're not. You're not going to find a Michael Thomas on, on the corner. You're not going to find it in Emmanuel Butler. You're not going to find it in a Traquan Smith. This guy. He's an incredible talent. He's hardworking. He dedicates himself, man. Coaches from Ohio State, coaches when he was in high school, all of them say the same thing. You know, he's not the fastest guy in the world, but he works harder than the next man. He works hard, okay? You're not going to find a person that dedicates themselves like Michael Thomas does, and there's a reason why the Saints decided to pay him and not Brandon Cooks. I'm going to say that again. That's the reason why they decided to pay him and not Brandon Cooks. I want y'all to keep that in mind, man. But I, I'm glad that the Saints end up paying him. I, but back to what people, you know, were saying about, you know, Michael Thomas and some of the decisions about the Saints. Look, I, like I said, I don't try to knock anybody's uh, opinion. I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinion. You know, some of the opinions I seen made me laugh and chuckle a little bit because <laughs> it didn't make any sense. And I even made a joke. And, uh, you know, I made a joke. I said, if some of the Saints fans that I've been looking um, on, on Saints groups and also on the State of the Saints podcast group, if I seen uh, some of y'all being GMs, uh, the Saints will have some down seasons. They'll probably be like 1-15, 2-14, 3-13. and You know, they'll have a first round, you know, first pick overall. Because I, I don't know how or why uh, <laughs> y'all could think that, you know, Michael Thomas is just somebody that Drew Brees just made great. I mean, first off, you can't make anybody great, okay? Like, <laughs> let's get that established right now. You can't make anybody great. Greatness is already inside of you. Right now, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're good at something, okay, somebody can bring that out of you. But it was always in you the whole time. Okay? So Michael Thomas was already great. Okay? The Saints just made him just basically they brought it out of him. Okay, so forget about all this stuff about Drew Brees made. Like you can't, like honestly, man. Like how many wide receivers have if you've been following the Saints, how many wide receivers have you seen that the Saints were like, man, this guy's gonna be the truth? I can think of but the guy Arrington, right? The the guy Arrington out of uh, Michigan, right? Everybody was talking about Arrington, man. Yeah, Arrington, man. He's going to come in and he's going to contribute to the Saints. And, and, and Arrington did absolutely nothing, man. The man couldn't even get on the field. He couldn't get on the field. He had all the talent, but he didn't want to be great, okay? He didn't want to be great. Michael Thomas wants to be great, okay? And that's the reason why he got the big bucks, Greatness is inside of you, people. So stop all this stuff about Drew Brees making people, you know what I'm saying, making people great. Because 
You, man, nobody can make you great. I'm sorry. Like, nobody can make you great. I mean, they can make you be productive. Now, if you want to make an argument to say that Drew Brees makes receivers productive, we can talk about that. But making guys great? Nah, man. I mean, come on. Like, Joe Montana, you know what I'm saying, didn't make Jerry Rice great. Okay? He didn't. Steve Young didn't make Jerry Rice great. Jer Jerry Rice was already great. Okay? He was already great. He made himself great. He he worked harder than every other wide receiver in the National Football League, and that's why he is known as being the GOAT. So stop that. Stop, stop that uh, whole he made he made Michael Thomas great, man. Stop that. Stop that. Uh, you know, I mean, yes, he does play a dependable position. Michael Thomas plays a dependable position. And, yeah, I mean, it helps that he he's uh, with Drew Brees. But I'm not going to say that the man would be a scrub if he played for the Miami Dolphins or something like that. I'm not going to say that he would be trash if he was, you know, playing for the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen was throwing the passes. I'm not going to say that, man, because we don't know. I mean, we just don't know. Oh, uh, yo, so I, uh, just just cut that out, <laughs> please. Like, I, that, that's what really bothers me, man. Like, Drew Brees is great, but... Man, don't try to, you know, discredit Michael Thomas, man, and make it seem like Michael Thomas just ain't doing nothing out there, man. Drew Brees just basically throwing them passes and, you know, he basically, you know, just throwing them passes and anybody can catch him, man. Man, the guy has a 85% catch percentage, okay? That's the best in 25 years. Do you imagine, can you imagine, like, how many great wide receivers they had in the last 25 years? I can name a few. I already mentioned one, Jerry Rice. You had Tim Brown, who played for the Raiders. You had Chris Carter, who a lot of people compare Michael Thomas to. I mean, you had T.O. Um, you had Randy Moss. I mean, 25 years, man, this man has caught uh, at a higher percentage than those guys? Come on, man. Like, nah, stop it. Stop it. Y'all y'all, killing me with this. I want people, like I said, I'm not trying to knock anybody's opinion. But I do want to... Uh, ask you to think logically, okay? Okay, think with this, not with this all the time, okay? You know what I'm saying? Because because this might tell you what you need to hear. This might, you know, sway you somewhere other way and tell you, tell people that Michael Thomas need to be traded. <clears throat> because I understand, okay? You Saints fans, okay? You, you you're Saints fans. Some of you have been longer uh, ten year Saints fans than others. I can understand you want what's best for the team, but. Michael Thomas deserves his money. And you can say it all you want to. I mean, I've made this, uh, I said this example on several occasions and people have been debating me. But to me, it's easy for us to, uh, you know, look at other people's situation and not apply it to our own lives. But if you were on your job and you were good at your job and you were better than the people that worked with you, and it was time for you to get a pay raise. You're not going to say, oh, I'm going to take one for the team. You're going to say, man, I'm doing the work. I want my money. The only difference is we're looking at Michael Thomas as a millionaire. OK, that's the only that's the only difference. But when you're playing in a league that's worth billions upon billions of dollars, it's not his fault. You know what I'm saying? Like he's basically um, asking for what he feels he deserves. The same way you would ask for what you deserve. If somebody came to you and said, you know what, you've been working hard, man, I'm not going to lie, but I don't think we're going to give you that pay raise. You're not going to say, oh, man, I'm still going to come to work. You might still come to work, but you're not going to be happy. So why would you expect for Michael Thomas to be happy? And I know I'm telling the truth. You, you, can, you can say, oh, yeah, you know, it wouldn't be no big deal to me. Stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> because it would be a big deal to you. Everybody wants to be acknowledged. Everybody wants people to uh, see the greatness inside of them. Everybody wants people to look at them and say, man, this person right here, you know, this person right here, man, we need this person, man. We, we, we value this person. So stop it. It's like, just stop it. Don't make it seem like compliments and all that kind of stuff and, and, and accolades and awards and merit increases it aren't important to you. You know, like maybe like maybe one of those things may not be, but a couple of those things I just named, they're important to you. Rather you want to say it or not. Um, let's see what else. Oh, yeah. NFL top 100, man. NFL top 100. You had to be happy. OK, as a Saints fan, you had to be happy because 
uh man we had a lot of man we had three new orleans saints in the top 20 okay you had alvin kamara coming in at number 14 you had michael thomas at 13 and drew Brees finally you know getting the credit that he deserves man drew Brees finally getting his credit man he finally getting it he's the number two ranked player in the nfl top 100 now i know a lot of people say that you know he should have been number one look i'm i'm <laughs> I know I'm probably about to make a lot of people mad. I think they did the right thing. Um, I watch a lot of football, man. I mean, I know I do the State of the Saints, uh, State of the Saints podcast. I do, and I love it. But I watch a lot of football. And let me tell you something, man. Aaron Donald is the truth. He deserves to be number one. He do, man. He he deserves to be number one. Because the guy plays defensive tackle. Okay? That's an interior lineman position. And for those that don't uh, understand what interior linemen, their, their main job is to stop the run. Okay, like when Sheldon Rankins had like six sacks, uh, six or seven sacks this past season, um, it was pretty incredible, man, because he's an interior lineman. His number one objective is to make sure that he stops the run. Aaron Donald had 20 and a half sacks at the interior position. Okay. Most of the time, you're going to get double teamed from the center and the guard. And this man breezed past them every single time. 20 and a half sacks at an interior lineman position, that's incredible, man. I'm sorry. Like, I love Drew Brees, and I feel like number two, he, he should have been because he's finally getting the credit that he deserves. But for somebody to lead the league in sacks at the interior lineman position, and if you see this guy play, man, it's sometimes it's not even fair. So I feel like... um. Drew Brees being number two, I was happy to see that because Drew Brees gets passed over time after time after time after time, man. Like, it, it you know, it really upsets me that the that the national media treats Drew Brees the way that they do. It, it really bothers me. It bothers me because they make it seem like anybody can do what Drew Brees is doing. Like that's that's what really upsets me. Okay, it's like. You know, they talk about Drew Brees. They talk about how he doesn't have arm strength, okay? But they talk about, like, you know, Drew Brees, they saying, like, you know, he, he throws short passes and he has playmakers. But we all know that's not the case. I mean, Drew Brees, yes, he does have playmakers. But how many times have we seen Drew Brees throw his wide receivers open? How many times have we seen Drew Brees do a back shoulder uh, fade to uh, Michael Thomas or to a Keith Kirkwood or to a Ben Watson? You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't making these these throws. But they make it seem like anybody can do it. They, <laughs> and, and, and they be killing me because they're like, oh, he just plays in a dome. Oh, he has he has uh, Sean Payton as his offensive coordinator slash head coach. Whatever, dude. Okay, because if Drew Brees didn't have a lick of talent or he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do, trust and believe. Trust and believe. Drew Brees would not be the starting quarterback of the New Orleans Saints. He would not be the all-time leading passer. He would not be the all-time leading in completions. He would not have any of these accolades if he wasn't good. I don't care who. I don't care who your coach is. I don't care who it is, man. I mean, <laughs> I mean, why are we trying to pretend... Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Drew Brees is not that talented, man. Why do why are they trying to pretend? Like, like Drew Brees doesn't deserve everything that's coming to him. Because I can name some very great head coaches, man. I can name some great coaches who had some trash at quarterback. And a lot of them left because they didn't want it to bring down their legacy. Um, can I interest you in the Dallas Cowboys and Bill Parcells? Hmm? I mean, do you remember that? I do. You remember when Quincy Carter, the, the quarterback that came out of Georgia, when he was stanking it up? Y'all remember that? Bill Parcells was his coach. Bill Parcells got out of town. He dipped out. They said it was about Jerry Jones, but no, it was about legacy. If, if Bill Parcells had a Drew Brees on his team, trust me, he would have coached another five, six years before he retired. Okay, so forget about all this nonsense about – who his coach is and all that kind of stuff. Drew Brees put in that work. He is the most accurate quarterback ever. He's the most accurate quarterback ever, point blank, period. If you don't believe me, go look at that quarterback challenge that's on the State of the Saints podcast page when he actually threw a football 
in between two guys who had on bubble suits, okay? These guys were supposed to meet in the middle. Drew Brees throws the ball so accurate that the ball got stuck in between these two guys when they ran into each other. That's how accurate this guy is. Matter of fact, I want you to pull up this. Um, this is on YouTube. This is a couple of years ago. Drew Brees um, was doing like this archery challenge, and he had to throw 10 footballs at this, at this bullseye. I don't know if some of you probably seen it. Some of you probably didn't, but check it out if you haven't. This man went 10 out of 10, throwing it directly in the center of the bullseye. Go check it out. I think it was on Sports Science. The guy is accurate, man. The guy is so accurate. The guy puts the ball where it needs to be. And the national media need to put some respect on this man's name. Dominique Foxworth from ESPN, I think he was on first take. Man, I couldn't believe what I heard. He said Patrick Mahomes, who only played one year of football, MVP or not, he only played one year. And all of a sudden, he talking about he better than Drew Brees. Man, knock it off. Knock it off. Like I said, man, you know, everybody, like, we all know what the national media does. They're always looking for that next big superstar. They're always looking for that next big thing. They're always looking for that, that guy they can, they can put and plaster on the front of ESPN magazine or ESPN.com. They're always looking for that, that exciting guy. You know, they're always looking for the, the, the controversial figure like an Odell or an Antonio Brown. Drew Brees is just a quarterback that everybody loves and everybody appreciates and everybody just thinks that he's the best. He's well-respected by his peers. The man loves his family. Every time you see him, you see him with his kids. The man coaches his son's football team. And there's really no controversy about him. But I guarantee you, if Drew Brees was out here pouting on the sidelines like Cam Newton, I'm pretty sure if he was around here turning over Gatorade buckets and knocking over nets like Odell and Antonio Brown did, I guarantee you Drew Brees, oh, he, he's just so great. The passion, the, the, the passion of Drew Brees. The man don't do all that stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, they're questioning his greatness. They, they feel like anybody can just throw up all them yards. They feel like anybody just become all-time leading passer. Oh, yeah, and this is my favorite one right here. Oh, he's playing in the new National Football League. Hold that real quick. Drew Brees came to the Saints in 2006. I want y'all to feel me on this. Drew Brees came to the Saints in 2006. In 2011, Tom Brady was injured. He tore his ACL. He was out for the season. The next year, in 2012, <clears throat> The, the NFL made a rule that you cannot tackle the quarterback by the legs. Okay, that's they call that the Tom Brady rule. So, for six years, for six years, Drew Brees threw for 5,000 yards three times. Okay? Three times. So, if the rules had something to do with that, how could he throw for 5,000 yards when people were still attacking his feet at the time? Huh? How how is he still throwing for five thousand yards when roughing the passer wasn't as uh you know what's the word I'm looking for roughing the passer wasn't uh, called as frequently as it once did at that time. So I'm like, it, you gotta pay attention to this stuff, man. But they do this stuff to try to discredit him, to try to make it seem like oh you know what I'm saying he he's taking advantage of the National Football League. Honestly. Drew Brees has thrown for less yards since this rule was implemented. I think he only threw for 5,000 yards maybe one, one more time. No, two more times since that rule came out. So for those 5,000 yard seasons that he had and all them touchdowns that he had, the majority of them came before this rule was even implemented. But you think they're going to tell you that? No, they're not going to tell you that stuff. Okay. And. Another thing, they're talking about Drew Brees dinking and dunking downfield, dinking and dunking. We all know that Drew Brees hates to throw picks, right? He don't like to throw picks. We've seen Drew Brees throw the ball in the dirt so many times. So you know what that tells me? Drew Brees is not just dinking and dunking. He's taking what the defense gives him, which a good quarterback does, okay? Because when it's time to really ball out, Drew Brees is slinging that ball down the field. For example, the NFC Championship game when, when they were down and they needed a big play, and he threw the ball to Ted Ginn Jr. down the field. Ted Ginn Jr. made that play. That was a deep pass, wasn't it? 
Drew Brees does what he has to do when he has to do it, but he's also smart. Drew Brees, you know, he, he's a brilliant quarterback. So you're going to uh, penalize a guy that he doesn't throw the ball 70 yards downfield only to get picked. Uh, he doesn't throw the ball 50 yards downfield, you know what I'm saying, between two defenders and it should have been picked, but, you know, some kind of miraculous miracle. He doesn't uh, roll to his right and pass the ball like a no look pass to his left. You're going to get you're you're going to penalize him for that? Nah, man, that's that's ridiculous. <laughs> and we need to stop, man. National media, please stop. And Colin Cowherd, man, my goodness, bro, talking about the Saints gonna tank. Like, keep in mind, this was the same guy when the Minnesota miracle happened. He said the Saints are gonna fall off a cliff. Not only did the Saints double down, they end up having the best record in the National Football League that season. So Colin Cowherd, I understand, man. Look, I get it. Look, I work in radio. I know how it works. And for those that don't know, I'll let you know. I do my show, and the first thing we do, we do show prep. You know what I'm saying? We sit around, we talk about what we're going to talk about. We talk about um, how we're going to deliver it, what happened. You know, and and people, you know what I'm saying, give us different ideas and views and why we should talk about these things. Colin Cowherd's show, I think, starts maybe at like around 12, 1230-ish. I'm pretty sure he does show prep. He has his interns. He has his producers. And they go in and they kind of prep him about what he needs to talk about and what angle he needs to come with it with. And that, that's how he gets his information. I was looking at a, um, I was looking at TMZ. And I think Colin Kyle heard he was coming out of a restaurant or a house or something. And the media just started grilling him about different sports questions. And he looked like a deer in headlights. It looked like he he never really understood sports. It like he really didn't know sports. And and some of the answers that he gave, man, was so vanilla. It was like even a six-year-old probably wouldn't know. You know what I'm saying? He was basically just, you know, man, he, he was he was just basically just throwing stuff out there. You know what I'm saying? He was like, what do you think about Patrick Mahomes? Yeah, man, he's good. He's good. You know, you know, Kansas City quarterback. Yeah, he's a good quarterback. Yeah. Throws the ball really well. Like I can even I can tell you that, right? Anybody can tell you if you if you go on any website, you can find that Patrick Mahomes got a big on. I mean, it was it was so vanilla, but that just proved to me like this guy don't know what he's talking about, man. And the people that he works with and the producers that that do the show that feed him the information through his ear, those are the MVPs. Those are the people that are trying to make Colin Kyle Hurd stick out. But I see right through you, Colin. I see you, man. From one shock jock to another. <laughs> I know what you do, okay? But you ain't fooling me. And you're not fooling who that nation, man. I know you don't watch New Orleans Saints football. Number one, you you mispronounce so many Saints names. Like <clears throat> calling Marshawn Lattimore, Marcus Lattimore. Marcus Lattimore was a great running back for the University of South Carolina. Uh, Traquan Smith. I don't know who Traquan Smith is. I don't know who that is. I know who Traquan Smith is. And... Just nonsense, man. You know, I be, I'm just, I'm just at a loss for words, man. But I see through you, Colin. I see through you, man. Ain't nobody getting fooled in the Huda Nation, especially yours truly. But um, that's all I got for y'all, man. That's all I got. Um, see if y'all got any questions before I get up out of here. Yeah. Um, shouts out to Shelly. She said Drew is so humble. Yeah, Drew is a humble quarterback. He's a, uh, he's a very uh, humble quarterback, and that's one of the reasons why the media don't like him. The media loves controversy. They love controversy, man. They they love polarizing figures. Okay, they they don't want anybody that they feel like is just they consider boring. Okay, they know the fact that he goes home to his family, he loves his kids. Um, he's a leader in the community. If anybody in New Orleans thought about touching Drew Brees, the whole city would be trying to look for this guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he can run for mayor tomorrow and don't know much about politics. Like, he's such a great guy, and, and the media don't like that. That's the reason why they always talk about Odell Beckham Jr. That's the reason why they always talking about the Cowboys. That's all, the reason why they always talk about Antonio Brown. It's because these guys are controversial. They're controversial, man. So they take up most of the storylines because, you know, the media been eating off them. You know what I'm saying? For years. Like, can you imagine how much money LeBron James has made for Skip Bayless? Like, honestly, I'm like Skip Bayless had two shows off LeBron James, two first take and undisputed. 
You know what I'm saying? Just by him just hating on LeBron James as long as he's been in the league. And I'm not even a LeBron fan. I, I don't even like LeBron like that. But that's how the media does, man. They they, they talk about these things so things can work in their favor. Uh, Shannon Sharp voice, uh, Patrick, my homeboy. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I'm not going to hate on Patrick Mahomes, man. Like, I'm about to tell y'all something that a lot of who that nation members probably don't know. The Saints were going to pick Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. They were going to get Patrick Mahomes, man. But the thing about it is the Kansas City Chiefs knew that. Because the Saints brought Patrick Mahomes in for workouts and everybody was just so high on Patrick Mahomes. And Kansas City got nervous, so they jumped in front of the New Orleans Saints to get Patrick Mahomes. And that was a good move for them. I mean, the Saints didn't end up losing. You know what I mean, because they ended up getting Marshawn Lattimore, which... Man, come on now. I mean, that's a good move, isn't it? That's a good move. I mean, they didn't get Patrick Mahomes, but they got Marshawn Lattimore. They got a lockdown, shutdown corner. And then in the late round, they got Ryan Ramchick. I mean, so the Saints won. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, Drew Brees still playing at a high level. So I'm not going to hate on Patrick Mahomes, man. Patrick Mahomes could have easily uh, been a New Orleans Saint. And who knows? Like, <clears throat> if he's playing the way that he's playing right now, we might be having some kind of controversy at quarterback, man. Like, y'all may not want to hear that, but who knows? If if Patrick Mahomes would have came to the New Orleans Saints playing like he did, I mean, this is, this is a dog-eat-dog -dog world in the National Football League, man. You might be looking at Drew Brees in another uniform. Real talk. Uh, Drew Brees needs to wear red shoes. He had on at practice. <laughs> Well, uh, if he does uh, wear those shoes, uh, Patricia, he'll end up getting fined. I mean, I don't know if y'all remember that game. I think around Christmas time, Alvin Kamara wore, wore red shoes, and he was fined $20,000. Now, I know $20,000 isn't much for uh, Drew Brees. I mean, that's, he can pull that out of his back pocket. But, I mean, they don't need to lose money when you don't have it. Like, I mean, when you don't have to. I mean, I ain't going to say he ain't got it. He definitely got it. But he would have got fined $20,000 if he would have wore that in the game. And uh, for somebody like Elvin Kamara, you know, to get fined $20,000, um, that, that was a tough hit for him. I'm pretty sure, man. I mean, everybody in the National Football League is not making hand over fist and money. And Elvin Kamara was like a third-round draft pick, <clears throat> so he's not making a lot of money. He definitely not. Let's see if I got any more questions on there. Um, I apologize, y'all, you know, if, uh, you know, I missed some of your questions. Uh, Taja uh, B says, uh, He's an accurate quarterback. I, I definitely agree. Drew Brees is one of the most accurate quarterbacks of all time. Um, the only person I think that was probably uh, a little bit more accurate than Drew Brees, I have to say Troy Eggman. Troy Eggman was extremely accurate. You know, I used to watch some of those quarterback challenges they used to have um, during the Pro Bowl. Man, the guy was incredible. Um, can we get five more years of Brees on a team? Friendly deal. Um, no. <laughs> like, I don't think Drew Brees is going to be playing five more years so, uh, As good as he looked Look the, it, the Look This is my opinion People want to be Sad to see you go They don't want to be happy to see you leave Okay I, I, I'm, I'm going to say that again Peep, You want people to be sad To see you go Not happy To see you leave Okay so, Drew Brees playing at a high level right now, to me, I would want to retire on a high note, okay? I would want to retire on a high note. So, I feel like if Drew Brees would have won the Super Bowl this past season, I think he would have retired. If the if the Saints win the Super Bowl or go to the Super Bowl and they, they win, I think Drew Brees is going to retire. I think, I think everything that the Saints have done have proved that my theory is correct. Because I want y'all to feel me on this, okay? If the New Orleans Saints are not thinking about Drew Brees retiring, why would they go back and get Teddy Bridgewater for $14 million a year? You could have easily gave that money to somebody else at another skill position. And then another thing, you got to think about it. If you're Teddy Bridgewater and you had an opportunity to play quarterback for your hometown team, the Miami Dolphins, and you turned that down, you ever wonder what the Saints told him in order to get him back? Because he was going to the Miami Dolphins. They wanted him badly, but they but he ended up going back to the Saints. 
So you have to ask yourself, what did the Saints promise Teddy Bridgewater? And and another thing, y'all remember they had a, a story that came out that said Teddy Bridgewater was kind of reluctant to sign with the Saints because he heard whispers that Sean Payton would coach the Dallas Cowboys. Now, if you are focused on being a success of a team, if you're not, I should say, <clears throat> if you're not focused on that, would you care that Sean Payton would go somewhere else? I'm just saying, because he's only signed to a one-year deal. He's only signed to a one-year deal. So if you're not looking at the future, why would it matter if Sean Payton, if the Saints just so happen to win the Super Bowl, he goes to the Dallas Cowboys? It won't affect you because you got a one-year deal. So it sounds to me like something was promised to Teddy Bridgewater, and they'll never see it. But I think you can put two and two together. I know I did. But, hey, that's just me. <laughs> but think about that though man why would teddy bridgewater why would teddy bridgewater resign with the saints you know when he could have easily been a, the starting quarterback of his hometown team come on man like think about this you had opportunity to play for the new york giants as a backup but the new orleans saints offered you to be the starting quarterback what you gonna do like growing up in new orleans man that would be a no-brainer to me i want to be the new orleans saints quarterback that's my hometown this man turned down his hometown. I'm pretty sure he had dreams of being the next Dan Marino growing up as a kid. He turned that down to come back to the Saints. What'd that tell you? I'm just saying. Uh, <clears throat> Justin, uh, what's going on with uh, Latavius Murray? Haven't heard a lot of good things about him in camp. He been hurt, man. For the last couple days, he been hurt. Um, and like I said, I don't know if you uh, caught the beginning of this uh, video, but... He has a track record of being hurt, and that's the reason why the Oakland Raiders uh, decided to let him go to Minnesota because they realized that he was one of those guys that was always having nagging injuries, man. And that's something that's concerning to me, and that's one of the main reasons why I feel like some of these other young guys are going to end up getting much more playing time. I, I look at guys like Dwayne Washington, man, a, a guy who, who played last season, had a good game in week, <clears throat> excuse me, week 17, uh, against the Carolina Panthers and also had a good game playing mop-up duty in the Cincinnati Bengals game. So watch out for Dwayne Washington, man. He's having a good camp. And uh, some of these young players, man, they need to step up. They, this is this is the opportunity, man. You see people like Emmanuel Butler, you know, who took advantage of these situations because, um, you know, Michael Thomas was holding out. That's what you need to do, man. You know, make sure that you 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 run every rep like it's your last man and get and get on the mind of these head coaches man because if latavius murray uh pass is anything like his present you'll get some playing time <laughs> but um that's all i got for y'all man you know if you have any questions please feel free to inbox me feel free to inbox me ask me anything you want man you know i, I love when people ask questions and and honestly, I do Q and A editions of the State of the Saints podcast all the time. So you might hear your questions, you know, on the podcast. I love doing this, man. I, I love uh, interacting with with listeners and viewers of the page and listeners of the podcast. Man, I really appreciate y'all. I, I really do. Um, I'm really passionate about my hometown team, and I just want to give you all a page that really focuses on the New Orleans Saints and give you, you know, a perspective, not a, a so much of a biased perspective, but for somebody that actually is just just passionate about his hometown team, man. That's all I, I want to do, and I just want to, you know, have, uh, you know, a very objective, uh, you know, point of view about it, and that's all, that's all I do, you know. So I appreciate y'all, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, youtube.com search the state of the saints podcast and also the state of the saints podcast is on twitter at sots podcast eight sots podcast eight so i'm looking forward to hearing from you um it's about that time my lunch break is over <laughs> but i'll get up with y'all later and i will continue to make uh, content and if anything comes out any breaking news or any videos i'll make sure that i share it on this page okay so till next time all i have to say is who that <laughs>